We're going to build a modeling ready data set um, for a sales forecasting model uh, using some demo data. So if you do have access to Jupyter, the place cards have um, like a snowflake log link to a, a demo account. Um, and you, so you can use that, those credentials to connect and you can actually run the code that we're gonna um, step through yourself. Um, we're, we're going to use Roscoe QL, which is a library that uh, allows you to write Python but compiles to SQL and it pushes all of the um, feature transformations into Snowflake. So uh, at the end of the, the tutorial, you'll have a modeling ready data set that's actually a single uh, table in Snowflake that you would then be able to connect a, um, you know, whatever your preferred modeling library is. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of an XGBoost model at the end. Um, not a big crew, so just yell out if you <laughs> are stuck on anything. Um, I'll kind of go slow at the beginning so we can make sure everyone's able to keep up. Um, we'll, we'll do little checks to make sure that things are making sense. Um, any questions before we jump in? Okay. Um, first step is uh, to get the Python libraries that we need to, um, to run the tutorial. Roscoe QL, the one I mentioned, is our open source package uh, that it actually includes the transformation templates that we're going to use. And it, it really uh, emulates pandas in a lot of ways for like the syntax with which you'll create the transformations. Difference being that they're going to get pushed uh, to Snowflake as SQL, not run in memory as Python. Um, so you'll see these red uh, like these blank sections in the code if you're stepping through the notebook. And so you'll anything that's highlighted on the slide is the fill in for like what's missing in the, the code block. Um, so you can kind of fill those in as you go and then the code should uh, run in your notebook um, once you kind of populate those values. So, um, Let's check, uh, are we good to kind of start running some of this? You guys able to connect and stuff? Are you on Python? Are you trying to run your book? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, it's probably going to be more uh, interesting for me to show a notebook then, since most of you are not trying to run the code alongside. Um, you good with that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool, let's do that. Um, so I'm going to flip over to my notebook that actually has these values filled in. Since you guys aren't writing the code yourself, you'll just be able to uh, kind of go through this process with me. Um, and let me make sure this is readable. There we go. How's that? Cool. Okay, so um, step one, install required packages. Uh, we're going to use, like I said, Roscoe QL for the transformations. And then we've got a couple of libraries here for the modeling, which we'll get to at the end. Um, and then NumPy and Pandas for some uh, kind of related steps through the process. Um, we are working with uh, the Snowflake warehouse. So the way that Roscoe QL works is it establishes a connection for you um, to your Snowflake account. And then it actually allows you to interact with um, the objects in your, your Snowflake like database or your entire account uh, directly in kind of this Python notebook. So for instance, when I call list tables uh, and then pass in AdventureWorks, that's saying um, it's, it's actually running a query on Snowflake and saying in the AdventureWorks database, uh, what tables are available and returning these table names uh, and then a little bit of metadata about those tables. So um, this is like, if your data's in Snowflake and you're used to pulling it out into Pandas before you do all your feature engineering, this is a new approach you can take that's going to like let you work directly within Snowflake. So once we establish, uh, or once we're able to um, kind of see those tables, we're gonna pick a couple to use to start building features. The other important part of this uh, open source library is the transforms themselves. Um, so 
a little bit of context here. Uh, as we print out and kind of list all the transforms that are available, think of each of these steps as a, uh, a kind of standalone operation that compiles to a SQL query um, that would then be run in Snowflake. So for instance, let's take bin. Bin is a um, Jinja SQL template that is available in the GitHub repo, um, which I'll show you just so you kind of uh, understand the concept here. And what Roscoe QL is actually doing when you call a bin uh, transform is it's hydrating this uh, SQL query. So this is a kind of pre-written um, query that does binning on a column in Snowflake. And you can see some of the um, variables here. Those are the things we're actually going to set using Roscoe QL. Um, it'll compile, like render that to SQL, and then push that to Snowflake. So just so you know like kind of what's happening as we step through this code, the, we're essentially building these chains of uh, many SQL transformations. Uh, does that make sense? Any questions so far? Okay. Cool. Um, and then there's always a fallback, which is uh, like, you know, maybe the specific thing you're trying to do is not available in a transform template. There's one called apply, which just applies custom SQL. So you can definitely uh, include that in your, your chain as you're going. Okay, let's start with um, kind of one of the core tables that we're gonna build features out of. So this is a uh, fact internet sales table. Um, this data set, it's a demo data set for a retailer. So this is, think of this as like, uh, uh, they're selling, I think it's bike parts online. Um, and these are you know, records of each of their sales. Roscoe QL, once you assign a variable to that data set, you can then kind of interact with that variable and, and like run Python functions that uh, trigger you know SQL interaction with your with your Snowflake account. So for instance, dot preview called on a um, Roscoe data set uh, returns a ten row pandas data frame. So it's just saying select top ten from that table. So you can kind of see uh, and start interacting with you know columns and, and values just to get a sense of what's contained in that data. So now we're gonna run our first transformation. Um, it's a really simple transformation because it's just an order, uh, ordering the table just to allow us to better kind of inspect this, um, this fact table. Uh, you can kind of see the syntax here. So we call dot order against the RQL data set object that we established above. And then the order by is a, like a diction, uh, yeah, dictionary where you can set ascending or descending in, in the specific columns. Um, so if, if you worked with pandas, like this probably looks pretty familiar. Um, I don't think it takes a, the order by and pandas takes a dict, but you can kind of picture how it um, how it's very similar in syntax. Is it pre-writing the query on the data frame now? No. Um, good question. This is actually compiling SQL and running it in Snowflake. Is it running after Snowflake? Exactly. Yes. Um, so each time we uh, build a, or like add a transformation to our SQL chain, uh, we can then call dot preview on it, which will run in, uh, that query and then uh, select top 10 against it to pull that back. But you're just seeing those 10 rows. So the underlying table here could be a billion rows, right? And we're, if we're working in um, Jupyter, like it's not pulling all that into memory. Um, this is a way, so that preview object you get back is a, a first class like pandas data frames. So you can call things like dot columns on it uh, just to further inspect. And all we're doing here is just finding the right column names for once we go into the feature engineering steps. So the one we're kind of highlighting here is promotion key uh, as being important as we're gonna build out a sales forecast. Okay. Um, let's start doing some joining. So this is um, where a lot of the heavy lifting starts. Uh, first, we're going to, we're now working with the promotion table, um, which is, is you know, related to the uh, fact internet sales table because each transaction is tagged with a promotion key if it, if it had a promotion on it. 
So now we want to actually join those two together so we can kind of see the, um, the sales and the promotion side by side. Uh, this step will run a drop columns. So we're going to kind of subset the table down to just the columns that we care about. And then uh, you get a quick preview here of like how much is each promotion uh, discounting the, uh, the sale. And then what you can see is, see how we assigned the result of that transformation to this new variable reduced promo. That can now be joined um, with the internet sales table. And you can think of that reduced promo as like a, almost like a draft data set. Because it, it only exists in the context of this notebook right now. But as we get further down, you'll see how you can actually persist that in Snowflake as a table or view um, if you want to make that like permanent you know, outside of the, the sequence that we're going through. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's in memory, but the data is not in memory. <laughs> so if I actually like print what that is, it's a... Um, the primitive we call it as a SQL chain. It's like a representation of multi, you know, one or more SQL steps that's being built up as we're going through this notebook. So it's not actually a, it's like a, a query that you can run to get data, but it's not data in memory. Does that make sense? Exactly. That's right. Um, and yeah, I, somewhere in here I'll start printing SQL, I think, and we can um, kind of start to inspect that. But each of these SQL chains can be rendered as uh, a table um, or a view. So you, you can kind of like export this into SQL logic at any point. Um, okay, so uh, you can see the join syntax pretty straightforward if you've done joining before, kind of your standard stuff, like what are you joining with? What's the SQL join type? And then on what columns do you want to join? Um, this is not happy because I probably did something out of order. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know what it's pissed off about. Uh, I said I'm not sure what it's mad about. But... Um, <laughs> it's, they're all going to break now. Uh, so part of like working in this sequential way is that um, these variables become <clears throat> the the way that you're expressing your chain in Python, your chain of SQL. Must have been one of the columns in the order by. Well, that's why we have the. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I think I have it already run somewhere. Sorry, bear with us. Oh, uh, we don't have the answer key for it. It is the best for um, the rest of the article. Yeah, a quick shout out if you like to go on GitHub and star things, this is a great thing to star. <laughs> um, it's 
especially awesome when it works. This one? All right. So here's the step we are on, which we. Oh, did I not comment out this? Yep. Oh. I was going to just see if I can change it really fast. Find out. That's correct. Yeah, I wanted to show where we start rendering SQL because then you, it all starts to sort of make sense. Um, how this all ties together. So there's multiple ways you can save this object. Um, you, so you can actually create a new table and the full chain of SQL that you've been building up as you go through these transformations can be embedded in like a create or replace view as statement. Um, and then that's that would render the entire uh, SQL chain. And it does it as CTEs. Um, uh, table expressions. It will, yeah. If you do it as a view, that's the benefit, right? Is your um, anytime you hit that view, you're going to get a live uh, look at the, the underlying feature values. If you rendered it as a table, uh, like a materialized table, then you'd have to refresh it. Um, and then let me just show. So we have. Uh, some pretty good docs that will also help if you try to use this at home. Um, one of the, I just wanted you to be able to see the different options um, for how you render the SQL, which are, so, um, oh, that's what I did wrong, I put parentheses. Um, by default, uh, so you get to choose your render method, like I said. Um, it's going to wrap all of this logic in uh, in that kind of CT structure, so it'll do with you know create or replace as, um, and then you can also export this to DBT. So if you think of you're building up a SQL chain, um, going through this kind of process of you know feature engineering. Let's say it had 15 steps in it. Um, at the end, you may want to save that as a DBT model. So that, that the table that you want to refresh could be refreshed by the, your DBT run command rather than you having to manually go in and refresh it. Um, and so this makes it really easy to do that because you can run two underscore DBT on any SQL chain, and that's going to create all the um, kind of file artifacts that DBT needs to uh, um, treat that as a model uh, that you've just built. Does that make sense? Any Good. Um, okay, let's get back in to the flow. So part of the feature engineering that we're doing, um, we're building up the uh, data set for the weekly sales forecast. So we're going to start creating weekly data by running a date trunk on the order date. Uh, and then um, you can see kind of calling the date trunk function here that it tells the uh, date trunk, uh, take the order date and pull out the week part of that. Uh, so that'll default to like first day of the week being um, Sunday. And then once you do that, you can actually start aggregating. So um, this kind of block of code shows doing two things. It runs the date trunk and then it calls the aggregate in a chain. So if you're familiar with pandas chaining of functions, uh, this package kind of supports the same syntax. And you can see in the aggregate uh, you pass a group by list, which are the columns that you want to uh, group by, and then you can aggregate uh, other columns like within multiple ways with this kind of syntax where you pass the uh, 
the key is the column name, and then the value is a list of aggregation types that you want to run on that column. So this is one of my favorites for feature engineering because um, obviously we do a lot of aggregation, but like uh, doing this in SQL is kind of a mess. Um, so this makes it a lot more succinct. The other cool thing we did is we just added uh, a couple more aggregation types to this transform. Um, one of them is called entropy, which is a really cool way to aggregate a categorical uh, column. And it looks for variability across the values in that column. Um, it's, it's almost like a, a count distinct, um, sort of uh, like a weighted count distinct is how I think about it. So it, if you had two um, columns and one had uh, 20 values in it that were all the same and then a single value that was different and you're on a count distinct on that, you would get a two back, right? It has two unique values, but really it's heavily weighted toward one of them. So entropy kind of accounts for that. Uh, and if you want to see some more detail on that, it's in the, um, the nice part about these is you can always go to the source code in, this, uh, in these transforms, which is complicated, but is still good to kind of be able to unpack. So you can always go into the aggregate and you could say, um, I want the Snowflake uh, aggregate template. And you can see exactly how it's computing the entropy. Um, the actual math is down here. It runs uh, this, um, it's like a logarithmic way to weight the, the values in the column. So just a shout out that um, things like this suck to do in SQL. So it's a lot better if you have a template that you can just run versus trying to type that every time uh, when you're um, wanting to run that aggregate. So it uh, only um, compiles to SQL right now, um, which has a limitation, right? Because some workloads need like a Python, like a looping approach. Um, that's uh, something that we're excited for um, Snowflake to kind of help with, with the, the Python UDFs. So once they go public, pre public preview on um, Python uh, UDFs, then we're going to add support here to let you push in Python and call it through the same flow. But for right now, it's just easy. So it can't push it right now. That's right. And how compatible is it with Python? Yeah, so great question. Um, if you saw when I went into the, um, like any transform, actually, my favorite is uh, date trunk. Yeah, so date trunk is different in like every SQL syntax because it's just a pain like that. So um, we have been building up uh, over time support for more um, more SQL syntaxes. Everyone says they're ANSI, but like they all still disagree, right? Um, so right now we have three supported, Snowflake, Postgres, and BigQuery. Um, and there's definitely slight differences. Like if you look at the BigQuery date trunk, it has like a known function for that. Whereas I think the Postgres one, you have to run an extract on it. Uh, no, it wasn't this one. It must have been the date part. But um, yeah, there are definitely some slight differences. We're accounting for that in how we build the templates. Yeah, so, and, and as we continue to expand, obviously if you are passionate about that problem, you can work on it too, and it's open source. But uh, I'm guessing we'll be doing a lot of the heavy lifting there and continuing to support more. Yeah, um, we're upvoting with uh, thumbs right now, I guess. So, good way to track what people are looking for. Um, the other part, so as we get into more like true feature engineering, uh, this is a forecast model that we're working toward, as I mentioned at the beginning. 
Um, in building that up, you end up doing a lot of window functions, uh, which again, fit the bill for me of things I don't want to write in SQL. Um, and so the lag transformation, uh, there's a time series aggregate transformation, which will create aggregates over like moving windows. Um, those templates, I think, are some of the most useful that the package has. Um, and it allows you to generate a lot of features really quickly. So you can see how this one is, um, it's taking a, a subset of the columns in the data set, and it's taking a, um, a list of amounts uh, that, that you wanna lag by. So since we're with weekly data, this does a uh, you know, one week, two week, three week, and a 12 week. And um, when you run this, it's going to create those lags for every column. So you're, you're really quickly here generating what probably 50 features or something um, out of those, those lags. And uh, those all show up as like windowed functions in the, the raw SQL, um, but just templated so it makes it kind of easy. So yeah, if it, any, um, any sort of feature generation you're trying to do at scale um, to kind of then run some feature importance on it and get to like a, a reduced set of, of features, this can make that a lot easier. Similarly with moving average, again, um, looking at these uh, windows and looking at how sales activity in the past can predict you know, future demand. Um, that's the intent of these features. Like if you think of uh, what a 12 week lag on um, order quantity is doing, it's saying 12 weeks ago, how much uh, demand was there for this specific product? And then, you know, in the model when we fit the algorithm, we're thinking that that's going to be predictive of you know, future, uh, future demand. So more features in that vein, um, are, that's also what we're building with moving average. Um, now we're at the, the point where we actually have a data set that we want to save in, in Snowflake. Um, benefit here is obviously if you're using a modeling tool that's connected to your Snowflake, you know, if you aren't uh, writing your modeling code just in Python, um, this is sort of compatible with that because once you create that view, you can connect to it with something like a data robot uh, to, to build your model. Or you could obviously go into our next step and uh, kind of create the final modeling data and fit the model uh, in Python. Uh, yes. Yeah, right now it's uh, very user driven. Like it doesn't magically generate features for you. Um, we do have on our roadmap a concept of, um, we call it accelerators. What it means is, uh, Basically, it does some of that feature generation for you using this as the underlying um, kind of language and just based on the model type you're building. So if you're doing a, a time series forecast, it generates a lot of window uh, look back features. But, but yeah, that is something that's uh, on our roadmap. It, it's live in our enterprise product, but we um, this uh, open source product kind of stands on its own. And so uh, it's extra work to add it here but we want to. Other questions? No? Okay, let's go to the fun part. Um, this code now transitions into sort of what I would call like final uh, feature prep for, for a specific type of model. Um, so we actually use the lag transform to create the target variable because what it's gonna do there is shift um, all of the predictors uh, essentially like avoid leakage by shifting the, the target one week forward. So we make sure that we're trying to predict next week's sales. Um, using lag is kind of a cool way to do that. And then uh, other thing you can do here, which again is not typically done in SQL, but it's really nice when you do it, is, uh, is encoding. So we have a number of encoding transform templates in this library. Um, one hot encode target and label are, are three of those. This one uses a target encoding, um, which is, is kind of a cool one. I mean, they're all 
sort of useful, but uh, obviously a lot of algorithms don't support inputting categorical uh, features um, directly. So by encoding those, you get a numerical feature that you can actually use in that prediction. This is a fun one. So uh, depending on your data quality, you may have to do some imputing uh, at the end. And one way to do that, um, because of the specific model uh, approach that this, this tutorial takes, um, we impute with a really large outlier. And uh, because it's a, a tree-based model, that has the effect of kind of filtering and sort of throwing out the, uh, the areas where there's missing values. Um, so this one's sort of algorithm specific of how you would want to handle the imputation, but the package has a nice uh, sort of flexible impute transform, which will find all the rows with missing values and then impute those missing values with the values passed in this kind of dictionary structure. Uh, and then I think this is our last transform, the train test split. Um, so again, something you probably usually do in scikit-learn. Uh, this also adds it as a column in SQL. So if you look at the end here, it creates a train test split labeling. Um, so, and it does that using a random sample strategy. So you can put in the percent of the, the rows that you want to use for training. Um, it also supports a order by for sort of a time aware train test split. <clears throat> and then it will output a column that labels each row, whether it's in the train set or the test set. And now we're at the point where we have a final modeling data set. We can actually save into Snowflake as a view and start modeling. Yeah, thanks. Um, awesome. So I forget. Okay, yeah. So it uses a XGBoost uh, model here to actually make the prediction. Um, this kind of final step is where you do have to actually extract the data from Snowflake. So we're at that point where uh, we're kind of past what we can do in SQL, right, as we want to go train this model. So this uh, package does have a convenience method for that. You can call 2DF on any uh, um, RQL data set, and it'll extract that into a pandas data frame. Um, so like all that compute until this point has been happening in Snowflake, but now this is the uh, um, the time where we're actually going to pull it out into the notebook to do modeling. And the nice part there is, like, think of all the aggregation that we've done. Data sizes uh, at this final feature kind of step are much smaller than they would have been at the beginning if we had uh, exported the whole base table into, um, into Python. And uh, basically just uses the train test split to create the two different data frames, just one for the train and one for the test set. And then it actually fits the model, uh, the XG boost model on the, the train set. And it goes through a bit of kind of standard um, model evaluation. And then shows you how to actually make a new prediction um, using data in Snowflake uh, to um, kind of pull like a relevant row or set of rows that might represent the values um, that you're trying to predict into the near future, uh, make a prediction, and um, then you get it, you have an actual model that's in, I don't know, pseudo production, like at that point, where you could uh, make recurring predictions of people. Um, and that is all she wrote.